Questions? All right, Lydian, what's this? Okay, I'm doing some CAN bus testing. This is the CAN bus cutie pie. This is my prototype that's in green. And it's a MCP2515 transceiver chip that will let it connect to CAN bus protocol. And I'm using this cable to do that. Uh, and this is a cutie pie SAMD21. It's got an little OLED and you can see the receiver. And on the other end is an RP2040 feather. And I've got plugged into that a rotary encoder. So was I rotary encoderify? Uh, this rotary encoder is read by the Feather RP2040 sent over CAN bus using these three wires to the cutie pie. And then uh, the value is displayed on the OLED. So when I press the button or rotate, messages are sent. So I know it's all working. It's a great little demo uh, to test um, Receiving and transmission with the MCP2515 on two Adafruit boards. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, this is my CAN BFF. It's for STEM QT or Shao boards. It's a cute little thing. Hold on, let me show you what it looks like when it's assembled. So we've got like, you know, a SAMD21 cutie pie. And then this goes on the back and it gives you CAN bus interfacing using an MCP25625, which is really just an MCP2515 with the built-in transceiver. And this is my tester. So I'm using an ESP32S2, and I'm doing a little trick where the native CAN support is going through this CAN transceiver and then feeds into this, which uses SPI to communicate over CAN. So basically I have a little CAN feedback loop here that makes for a great and easy tester without needing any extra hardware. And you can see it's passing test. So this is good to go. Going to go into the shop soon, which means that any Shao or Cutie Pie board will now be able to communicate over the CAN bus protocol. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? This is an AT Tiny 817 breakout board, which we stock. And this is my UPDI friend. Uh, UPDI is a one wire programming interface uh, for AT Tiny chips, modern AT Tiny chips. It's nice because you only need one wire, it's compact, it's easy, you just need a USB serial converter. Uh, so I've got this board that I designed. It's got a three or five volt logic and power selection switch. It's got uh, powering and UPDI in ground, some silk screen on the back. Um, you can use a JST SH cable uh, to make wiring nice and easy. And then I designed a tester for it using an RP2040 because we have native USB serial with bit banging available on any other pins. So I've got this USB host port, which will enumerate and connect to the on board USB serial chip and then when I put it here tests that uh, data is going in and out of the UPDI, UPDI pin correctly so this passes test very nice and it's going to be ready to go in the shop soon all right lady what's this this is me testing out uh the last sections of the itsy bitsy ESP32 which is itsy bitsy a very tiny little board that has an ESP32 um, Pico, not an S2 or S3. It's a classic ESP32. So when you know in lava, it's got to make QT and a reset button, an extra button, and a USB serial converter, and then like a NeoPixel driver chip and a couple other things to make it really easy to use. Um, so here I have into the STEM QT plugged a temperature humidity sensor and an OLED just giving me some status. And I'm connecting to Adafruit IO because it's a really easy way to verify that the Wi-Fi works well. You can see I can change the color of the onboard NeoPixel. So when I need to go there, now it's red. And then I can go back up to the Adafruit I.O. page. And then I'm like, no, you know what? I like blue. And then boom, it's blue. So all is working. Uh, looks great. This is really going to be awesome for Whippersnapper, but also just whenever you need a really small ESP32 with uh, 2 megabytes of PS RAM and 8 megabytes of flash. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a new Feather. So we've updated the Feather NRF52 840 cents. Uh, this was out of stock for a while because a lot of components were unavailable during the chip shortage, but we were able to get parts and redesign. And so this is back in stock. And so since we already had this going and people really love our TFT feathers, I thought, hey, maybe let's make a TFT feather, but with an NRF52840. So here it's showing the temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, triple axis accelerometer, triple axis gyro, triple axis magnetometer, and the microphone it's still working on. Stemma QT, uh, user button, reset button, battery backup. And then on the back, all of those sensors and an NRF 52840 module with eight megabytes of flash. So it's kind of like the Feather Sense, but with the display built in. This could be really cool for if you're doing sensor projects and you want to transmit data, but you want to have a little bit more information than just a NeoPixel 
or an LED. So, uh, so far looking good. Just got to fix that microphone and we'll get this into the shop. All right, lady, what is this? Okay, this is me testing out a new board design. It's a thing that takes a new pixel signal and then converts it to an RGB common anode output. So NeoPixel power ground data comes in here. This is a WS2811 chip. Uh, and then there's an inverter, and then it drives three powerful transistors. So it can drive, uh, you know, 5 to 12 volt LEDs, common anode, up to 3 amps a channel. So, for example, uh, if you're talking about uh, 5 volt high current, this is a ultra bright 3 watt LED it's being driven by the NeoPixel mm -hmm. swirl. It's so bright, the camera's getting confused. And then here is a um, tower light. So these take 12 volts, and there's three channels, and I'm driving it just like it was a NeoPixel. Um, and then I'm powering it from the uh, Metro's 12 volt input here. So, you know, basically instead of wiring up transistors and, uh, you know, uh. whatever diodes and LEDs and whatever, uh, you just connect it up as if it was a NeoPixel and you can just uh, turn on and every channel with PWM. All right, lady, what's this? This is a floppy disk, yeah. but really it's a circuit board. Yeah. It's a floppy sized PCB. It's got a little floppy bunny on it. So I just got these PCB prototypes and I'm bringing up the board. So it's got RP2040 with 16 megabytes of flash and a micro SD card. Stemic QT, you can power from USB or from 12 volt power. And then down here, it's got a floppy connector and it's got a five and 12 volt uh, Molex. So you'll be able to use this with your laptop, three and a quarter, sorry, three and a half, five and a quarters. Uh, maybe even 8-inch drives will get that working. Um, and then also laptop floppy drives, which use um, an FPC connector. And got like level shifting, right protect. And I even have a little um, TFT screen, hopefully, up and running. So you can have offline mode. So you don't even need a computer to do uh, floppy disk archiving. Pretty cool. Uh -huh. And we'll have more about the uh, floppy board soon. But that is top secret for this week. Get back in that vault. Yeah. Okay. We have a bunch of questions lined up. 